Hello everyone, it's me, Clayton. I just finished watching The Liberator, which came out just today on Netflix and was created by Jeb Stewart, based on the book The Liberator by Alex Kershaw, and was narrated by Dirty Jobs host Mike Rowe. Now, when it comes to this war story, which is based on the Thunderbirds in World War II, what makes this story different than most other war tales is that it's done in a rotoscope style of animation that takes live action actors and put and digitally animates them to give it a stylized look similar to a graphic novel similar to films like a scanner darkly or the work of ralph ba bakshi it's an interesting visual style to be sure but it's used in a film that used that goes through a war story in a pretty typical way that won't stand out especially if you're a fan of films like if you're, especially if you're a fan of films and series like The Band of Brothers. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story follows Captain Sparks, played by Bradley Harris, who has to take command of a, of a group of soldiers who are, who are, say, Native Americans, Mexicans, and Dust Bowl Cowboys, who are, out, who are essentially outsiders in America, who all have to fight together against the German threat the Nazis in World War II. And the, and the four episodes of the series revolves around Sparks gaining the trust of his soldiers, gaining loyalty for all of them, and also seeing the horrors of war in a way that's similar to Band of Brothers, if you've ever seen it. Basically, I'm not saying that the series is a full-blown rip-off of that series. It's just that these scenes of grisly terror not only have been seen other times before in other war, war series, but sometimes I feel the animation does happen to take away from these grisly moments. <clears throat> Basically, what makes something scary in live action doesn't necessarily translate the same way to a rotoscope style of animation. So when you see things like corpses in a train, or when you see blood, blood splatters on screen, it's less graphic and less, uh, and less shocking in live action to me, I mean, less sh shocking, it's more shocking in live action than it is in rotoscope animation. Basically, while the rotoscope animation does work well for the actors and it does manage to make them look like they're straight out of a graphic novel, like, I don't know, a Sergeant Fury uh, animated series, the, it does happen to work for the actors, but not so much for the objects and when it comes to the, some of the other effects. It makes some of the objects and the settings look a little. I could. I. It makes them look a little less detailed than they would be in live action, and it makes some of the violence look a little too, in lack of a better word, cartoony in comparison to, mm -hmm. in comparison to if it was done in live action. I'm not going to say it's not interestingly stylized because it certainly is, but when it's an interesting experiment that's not exactly used. For the best story or for the best characters, the style can only take you so far, especially since the series is around 3 hours and 15 minutes in total when it comes to all four episodes. So unless you're really interested in the story and really interested in the World War II history, you're probably not going to last as long as some people will. But with that being said, the acting at hand here is done very well. Especially, especially Sparks, as the, our main character, does a solid job as the, as the army commander who has to see the horrors of war. And one of the actors who was in the Magnificent Seven remake plays one of the soldiers, and he's, pre and he's pretty solid as well. I just wish the story either delved more into the Thunderbirds and the racial minorities who were in the war, since they made such a big deal out of it in the first episode, or at the very least, if they if they happen to flesh everything out more. As it stands, The Liberator is an interesting experiment for a kind, this kind of series, but I do wish that its rotoscope animation style went to a better story and characters. That's why I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. See you next time.